Today is Monday, July 3rd. It's July 4th weekend. We have spent the night at Little River Inlet, just inside the inlet, uh, at a small anchorage that we checked out when we were heading south months and months ago. Uh, today our destination is in North Carolina. Uh, we're going to Carolina Beach. And to accomplish that we will go out into the Atlantic today, uh, we'll go out here at Little River Inlet, we'll head east, then we'll come in at Cape Fear River Inlet, and then we'll go about uh, 13 miles north up the Cape Fear River to Carolina Beach where we will spend tonight, hopefully. So this will be our transition from South Carolina back into North Carolina, uh, Whitetail's home state. We have almost completed the journey. We're almost back to the Pamlico where we began six months ago. We would be back there already, except for some bad luck with the weather and some bad luck with things like our windlass dying. Uh, that cost us seven days. So uh, we're nearly home. Today will probably be our final outside passage in the Atlantic. The rest will probably be ICW. We've done three outside passages since we got back to Florida from the Bahamas. Uh, this will be our fourth. So I thought it would be interesting to film. Haven't filmed a lot of the other stuff because it would have been duplicative of what I showed you coming down. We're heading out of the inlet now. This being July 4th weekend, there are many people on the water having fun and celebrating. Some are very skilled and courteous individuals, but not all, which makes it a little bit challenging. Um, there's an awful lot of wakes around. The, the water a moment ago was like a washing machine in here with all of the wakes from the powerful fishing vessels. Right now it's settled down a bit so I can grab the camera. Why did we not, not set off sooner before all these people got out of bed? Is it because Dan and I are lazy? Well, yes we are, but that's not the reason. Uh, the reason is that uh, when we get up to Cape Fear Inlet, we don't want to get there before about 5 p.m. Otherwise, we'll be fighting an outgoing tide. That will be a miserable experience. Uh, we've timed our departure from here to get to Cape Fear River Inlet at, um, at about 5 o'clock when the tide will be behind us and not against us. And that means we've had a late departure from Little River Inlet, which is why uh, we're here at the same time as, uh, as this crowd. But um, it's all good. Uh, I hope everyone has a, a wonderful and happy and safe July 4th. We are out of the inlet. We're about a mile or two offshore. We are sailing, uh, we probably already sailed across the boundary line between South and North Carolina. We, uh, we had a bit of a rough time at the inlet. Inlets often have a lot of a chop that gets amplified by the reduced depths and the, and the funneling effect of the jetties and so on. It was pretty unpleasant in there, but once we got out here, we were able to head up into the wind, get the mainsail up with one reef, get the jib up with one reef, and we are moving along nicely at about six knots. So this is the kind of pace that we're looking for today, so as to not reach the uh, Cape Fear Inlet too early, uh, which would result in us having to fight against uh, an ebb tide, so this is uh, looking good. We have plenty of time to reach our destination today. In fact, there would be a penalty for getting there too early because the tide would be against us. So we're going to keep a, a reef in each sail and we've let out the main slightly and detrimmed a little just to keep everything smooth and quiet. Um, on the boat, we're using the boat's integral systems to monitor uh, our location and speed and so on. We have as a redundant backup the iPad, which is uh, making its own monitoring. And we even have a, a handheld device uh, here. We have a handheld GPS, which is also tracking our position and uh, speed and t giving us an ETA at the inlet. So. We have at least triple redundancy there, not including our phones. It's one o'clock, we've had some lunch, PB&J, and uh, the waves are smoothing out. We're cruising along nicely at about just under six knots. Uh, ETA may be a little early. Um, I was thinking we'd get to the inlet at about five and have about a knot behind us, but actually it looks as though we're going to get there at about 4.15, which will be slack tide, so that'll still be fine. At least we won't be fighting a current getting into the inlet. That's the important thing. 
right now it's uh, becoming very pleasant. The sea, sta sea state's calming down, uh, the boat's nice and settled, everything's very civilized. There are other inlets along the Carolina coast. Somewhere there you should be seeing Shalott Inlet, but they're not all suitable for a boat that draws as much as a sailboat draws, and they're not all suitable for people who, who don't have local knowledge. So we're sticking to we're sticking to those inlets that are that are well dredged and easy to navigate. Uh, right now we are on a very uh, comfortable beam reach on a starboard tack and we continue to have one reef in each of the sails doing about six knots. We're about halfway through the Atlantic portion of today's journey between the inlet for Little River and the inlet for Cape Fear River. So that's nice, it's going okay. Uh, the waves have picked up a bit again, but nothing that Whitetail can't handle so far. After that, we'll have a three hour leg going up the ICW to Carolina Beach. So um, the most unpleasant part of all of that is likely to be negotiating the inlet. Inlets tend to be choppy and bumpy and just not great places to be. So not particularly looking, not particularly looking forward to that. But this outside portion is nice. It's good to be, it's good to be out in the Atlantic again under sail with the engine off. The afternoon's been going okay, but unfortunately, behind us, things have started to take a sinister appearance, which is uh, not so great. Uh, there is some thunderstorms that developed over Ural's uh, Inlet, and they're moving kind of northeast. Whether they uh, will end up over us, I'm not sure. We're heading due east, so we have a chance of escape. With unexpected bad weather moving in, we've uh, got the sails down, we've got the motor up, and we are actually at the inlet at about the right time for slack tide. We're approaching it ready for slack tide, which is nice. So um, we're heading on in and we'll see how this goes. If the storm sits on top of the inlet when we're trying to be there, then we may well turn right back around and come out into deep water and wait for the storm to pass. And as those two green markers line up there, we are now inside the channel for Cape Fear River Inlet. We got through that inlet okay. Inlets are not my favorite. I don't like them. The, the waves are always bad. The chop is always bad. But we got through just fine. The storm had been through and gone away before we even got there. So that's fine. We didn't have to deal with bad weather. And the other nice thing is that Per our calculations, we arrived just after slack tide, so we're getting a nice little boost from the current instead of having to fight the current. The current here, the current here in uh, Cape Fear River is as much as three knots, so you definitely don't want it against you, and if you can get it working for you, that's just going to give you a nicer time. So we're going to be traveling up here for about three hours, going up Cape Fear, towards uh, Snow's Cut and then uh, Carolina Beach, which is where we have a mooring ball for one night only. It's 6 p.m. and we're chugging up the Cape Fear River. Uh, behind me, you can see uh, a large army ammunition depot for the U.S. Army. Uh, one of the largest in the world, I believe. So, a lot of ammo there. It must be a huge logistical effort involved in keeping that supplied and moving it all around. Our final challenge for the day is Snow's Cut. It's uh, a long, narrow cut, about one and a half nautical miles. Uh, a long, narrow cut just off of um, uh, the Cape Fear River, but it's, it shouldn't pose any great difficulty. After that, we just hang a right into Carolina Beach and go down and grab the mooring ball that we already booked. Uh, last time we were here, on our way south, we didn't use the mooring field, we just dropped anchor Today we thought it would be wise to book in advance and get a ball just because it's July 4th weekend. The place could be pretty maxed out, so that's the nice thing about mooring fields. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll see what we see in there. When we came through here heading south six months ago, it was the narrowest cut we had passed through at that time, and we were a little bit freaked out by how narrow it was. 
But now that we've been through Current Cut and Hatchet Bay in Eleuthera, this seems incredibly wide and spacious and easy. And here we are in Carolina Beach. Um, it was uh, it was an okay day. It was great to be under sail again. Our fourth leg out in the Atlantic since we uh, came back to the States and we were able to get under sail, turn off the engine, both sails up, all of that felt good. Uh, inlets just are a menace to deal with. They're very unpleasant. It's, there's a lot of washing machine effects. There's a lot of wind against current. Um, and uh, on top of that, we had a threat of a thunderstorm as we were coming back in, although thankfully that did not actually materialize. So that's something. Anyway, we are back in North Carolina for the first time since, uh, for the first time in 2023 actually. We'll, tonight we'll sleep in North Carolina for the first time in 2023. So that's another milestone and we're only a few days out now from the Pamlico, which is nice. So we'll see how long it takes us to finish the rest of the journey. And once we're there, we can get a few things done on the boat to make her perform a little more as we would wish. 